All right, shove it, squad. Matt Hardy is part of an elite group of wrestlers from the Attitude Era, which is still around today, and we love him for it. But in 2010, nobody loved Matt Hardy. Or should I say, Fat Hardy. People despised the Hardys in 2010 due to their constant legal battles and arrests and extremely weird YouTube videos that they were uploading to their own personal channel. The Hardys were clearly off their heads in these videos and it didn't seem like a good high. The atmosphere was one of moping and sadness. It feels weird now, but at one point, Matt Hardy was in the wrestling news for bad reasons just as much as Jeff. In fact, Matt Hardy was actually seen as worse at one point. They were both pretty messed up at this point, but Matt usually bore the brunt of the fans' hatred because he'd gotten pretty fat. He kept saying that his gut had exploded, causing his stomach to expand. Yet in his videos, he was often seen scoffing down cheeseburgers. Sadly, these videos seem to have disappeared, but what a dark period this was. Before I get into today's video, this was a Patreon request by Audi for Life. If you want to make the Hawk talk, sign up today. Anyway, back to the video. Matt had left WWE in October 2010 after a series of videos begging for them to release him. So of course, he joined the only wrestling company in town, TNA. And nobody was happy to see him. I've decided at this point in my career, it's one of those I have to make things happen. I had a terrible year the last year, health-wise. I mean, to McDonald's, bro, maybe it's a Coke problem uh, he's got. Uh, mm -hmm. And as far as my condition, I am great. No need to worry about me because I am A-OK, -okay, actually, better than ever. This was not the high-flying, missed opportunity tag team star who makes the girls say nah. This was seen as TNA signing a washed-up has-been druggie who was frequently bringing negative attention to himself. And the company had already tried signing a load of washed-up has-beens at this point when Hogan and Bischoff arrived. TNA fans didn't want any more. But despite that, Matt Hardy joined TNA at the start of 2011 as cold-blooded Matt Hardy was born. So who exactly was cold-blooded Matt Hardy? Seemingly, it was just Matt Hardy as a heel with dreadlocks. He made his debut on the Genesis pay-per-view as a mystery opponent for No Job Rob. This was actually a hilarious joke that TNA had made because RVD had been begging for a match with then world champion Jeff Hardy. He kept screaming, I want a match with Hardy, which technically was answered by a Hardy. The crowd immediately chanted, Hardy sucks. He was admittedly in slightly better shape, but he just didn't look like a man who was in a happy place. His style had become a lot more grounded and submission based too. And in a complete shocker, he gets Rob to do the job in his debut. Best off not mention that Rob's foot was under the rope though. Matt of course joins up with his brother and says he's in TNA to make money and take whatever he wants. And just like that, straight away on the first episode of TNA since the pay-per-view, the dumbasses at TNA throw Matt and Jeff Hardy together in an unannounced tag team match. The first time they'd teamed up together in three years. You would think they'd want to try and advertise this potentially massive match and maybe save it for a pay-per-view, but nah, we gotta try and pop that rating. But then again, maybe the Hawk is wrong, because this company had their most successful year's viewership in 2011 with an average of 1.20. Anyway, the Hardy Boys win over Anderson and RVD. But the problem is, we're only a week in and Matt Hardy already seems like he's fading into the background of this huge immortal faction. He essentially just exists to do his brother's bidding in this feud of Rob Van Dam. In his third TNA match, he's beaten by Mr. Anderson in a four minute match, so it truly does seem like Hardy is only there to back up his brother and be literally nothing else. Whilst nobody was asking for it, we've got another pay-per-view match between Rob and Matt Hardy, against all odds. Before the match, Matt Hardy explained more about what being cold-blooded means. Basically, he's tired of being the nice guy and now he's cold-blooded, aka a heel. He also claimed that WWE punished him for his brother signing with TNA. The match with RVD is better than the last one, but it's hard to buy that Matt Hardy has a chance of winning after losing clean to Anderson a few minutes on the match before. This match features a slightly dodgy looking back body drop from the ropes, which I felt, and also Matt Hardy missing a moonsault. Van Damme wins with a frog splash to the surprise of nobody. The problem with the Immortal faction is it's so full of geeks, and by association, Matt Hardy has become one of them. Another match which would be given away for free on telly was cold blooded Matt Hardy taking on AJ Styles. It's another three minute match, Matt actually beats AJ Styles, but only because Ric Flair turned on AJ. It meant nothing. The most frequent comment I get about cold blooded Matt Hardy is seeing his gormless face behind Bischoff's head in one of his many, many, many promos. The feud against Styles continued, but it felt like it should be more like AJ Styles vs Ric Flair. The biggest highlight of this feud is a Matt Hardy promo in which he tries to insult AJ Styles by calling him a child in 10 different ways in one promo. That is despite Matt Hardy being only two years older than AJ Styles. A really dumb promo. They also do a triple threat between these guys on TV. It's essentially just a handicap match and Ric Flair wins after Hardy hits a twist of fate on a steel chair on AJ. 
At Victory Road 2011, Hardy and Stars treated us to really the only high spot of the pay-per-view, which was a universally hated pay-per-view. Judging by Matt Hardy's pre-match promo from the way he looked, he was the one that was going to screw up this match, but he didn't. It was his brother. I guess nobody told Matt about the age gap between Hardy and AJ because yet again he spent the promo time making fun of AJ's youthful age. AJ wins the grudge match. That of course wasn't the only Victory Road highlight and you've got to imagine that Matt Hardy was guilty by association with his brother Jeff for his drug antics. I agree! After that, Jeff was gone from TNA but Matt Hardy remained. Bully Ray was immediately drafted into the Immortal Faction and he outshone Matt Hardy straight away. Around this time it seemed like Matt Hardy's nose was six different shapes I'm not sure what was going on there. Matt continued being nothing but a random henchman for the Immortal Faction and they could have realistically had anybody play his role. Matt Hardy debuts a new finisher, which is a submission which he calls the Ice Pick. Really, it's the only thing I remember about Matt Hardy in TNA this time. It's a pretty nice and believable submission hold. Someone should bring this one back. TNA decided to hold a cage match with Immortal vs TNA on Impact as hype for a cage match between Immortal vs TNA on pay-per-view. Don't question the logic again, it makes sense. This match is pretty terrifying. Matt Hardy decides to fight Christopher Daniels on top of the cage and it seems like Matt didn't expect to be up so high judging by the look on his face. There's almost a botched back body drop where Daniels almost falls to his death. Daniels is a brave man fighting a man with personal problems on top of the cage. Hardy also takes a pretty nasty fall to the outside of the cage and he's then dived on by Daniels. The TNA fortune guys win after Flair taps out. Over on Impact, the Hulkster randomly makes a match in what he calls as the man with the biggest chip on his shoulder, Matt Hardy, against the world champion Sting. He says that he's going to make this match because Matt Hardy wants revenge for what Sting did to his brother at Victory Road. Wait. What did Sting do to his brother at Victory Road? This announcement is met with loud crowd booze, especially given the fact that this will be for the world title. The biggest TNA match of Matt Hardy's TNA career. And as usual, Matt isn't even the focus of the match. It's all about Jeff Hardy and he isn't even bloody here. Matt Hardy even comes to the ring wearing Jeff Hardy's custom made title belt. It's enough in match and of course the Sting are beaten. Matt Hardy moves on to try and eliminate Bobby Roode who's been a thorn in Hogan's side. Matt Hardy says he was and still is the greatest tag team wrestler in the world and he's going to show Rude that he's better than him. They agree to have a tag team match at the pay-per-view with Matt Hardy having a mystery partner. It's assumed that his partner is going to be Jeff Hardy. How wrong we all were. Shout out this promo from Matt Hardy where he has a problem with James Storm for liking beer, which is just laughable coming from someone like Matt. Matt Hardy's nostril is literally eating itself at this point. It's revealed that Matt Hardy's mystery partner is the returning Braden Walker, fresh off a terrible WWE run. He looks like Bret Hart ate Mike Awesome. Chris Harris being here was relevant because Harris used to tag with Storm as America's Most Wanted once upon a time. On to Sacrifice 2011 and the tag team title match. As usual this match isn't really about Matt Hardy and it's more about the fact that Chris Harris has come back. Matt Hardy's barely in there and Chris Harris is beaten with the death sentence. Hardy dumped his nappy of fear and bailed at the end of the match. The original plan here was to reform America's Most Wanted and have Bobby Roode go singles wrestler. So nothing to do with Matt Hardy then. Bischoff went toward the X Division next, which once again was nothing to do with Matt Hardy. But he was Hardy's Grey Crew member and Bischoff and Hardy teamed up to face the Young Bucks. It must have been really cool for the Young Bucks to wrestle one of their heroes, but you know what they say, you don't ever want to meet your heroes. Matt Hardy eventually kills Max Buck with a vicious ice pick submission and lays the table for Bischoff to sweep up. And the Grey Crew claim a win over the Young Bucks. Hardy's final TNA match came in early June 2011 as he took on the undefeated Crimson. Hardy utilised the leg drop in this match which is a move he'd have to retire in the future due to the damage it was doing to his knees. It's actually a decent match considering Crimson was very green and gets a lot of hate. And props to Matt for carrying him to this decent match. Even more props considering what was going on in the Hardy boys life at that very time. In June TNA suspended Matt Hardy for several reasons. He kept turning up late to shows. His online activity was getting stranger by the day as he posted videos where he was clearly under the influence and one particularly disturbing video where he and his brother Jeff used a taser on Rebby whilst giggling. She must have enjoyed it somewhat to end up marrying Matt though. Matt encouraged fans to boycott TNA on Twitter whilst he was still employed with them. So we have this really weird situation where for a very brief time both Hardy boys were employed by TNA but also suspended from TNA. But the final straw came in August. First he posted a video about suicide. Then around this time, Matt Hardy crashed his car into a tree. He was arrested and charged with driving under the influence. TNA immediately fired Matt Hardy, and this was a decision that was fully supported by everyone in the wrestling world. Over the next few months, Matt was arrested another four times. His house was raided, and he was suspected of selling ecstasy and steroids. 
This all came to light after Rebby called the police reporting that Hardy was strung out on pills. He attended WWE rehab, but he was kicked out for drinking. Hardy has since claimed that the suicide video was fake, as he never had any intentions to do that. It was more about his old character committing suicide and giving birth to a newer and cleaner Matt Hardy. Thankfully, Matt Hardy cleaned his act up eventually and headed to RH in 2012, where the fans didn't really accept him and then back to TNA again. It's crazy to think how bad things had gotten for Matt in 2011, and at one point he was viewed as more of a high risk than Jeff Hardy. It's also crazy how Matt managed to turn himself around. It feels like the usual characters develop a problem and keep making the same mistakes over the years. Whilst Matt Hardy didn't really do anything wrong in a TNA ring like Jeff did, he sure didn't impress anyone. Eric Bischoff, the leader of the Grey Crew, said he was happy when Matt was released and didn't want him bringing his baggage into TNA. He said that Matt was embarrassingly out of shape and called him trouble to the same degree as Jeff Hardy. You have got to think that TNA didn't want to make Matt a central part of the show due to his obvious problems, and at the same time, he just wasn't as big of a star as Jeff Hardy. They could avoid not using him too much. Matt was not an important part of the TNA show, and if cold-blooded Matt Hardy had never existed in TNA, the company wouldn't have changed one bit. Massive respect to Matt for turning things around. It was looking bad at one point. And if you don't agree with that, I'll smoke your ass like a joint.